Welcome to the second half of the crossfade animation on Pygame Tricks. This is Python Bro. We're going to look at using our crossfade object that we used in our last video to um, fade different things in and out, not just logos, but then going into an actual game. Uh, what I've done is let's look at this first. Uh, I've made this Samus object, which essentially it's a sprite with. Um, uh, using images from a sprite sheet for Samus Aran from the Metroid Fusion game on Game Boy Advance. I've made it so that she will run across the screen when you press space and when she's in the middle of the screen if you press space again or if you never pressed space um, she's doing a breathing animation. Let's go ahead and look at it and then we'll explain it. Our logo is going to fade in and out using our time delay then it's going to fade in our game. You can see Samus is there press space, she starts running. I've got her wrapping around the screen. It's really nice. I think it works really well. Let's take a look at how it works. Um, our crossfade object is exactly the same. I've just copied and pasted it and I will put the source up there so that uh, you guys can get that. Uh, I've created this logo object um, which is a sprite full of our background images. Now if you're building a real game, you're probably going to do this a little differently. Well, you're going to do it differently. You shouldn't do it this way. But um, what I'm basically doing is this logo object is going to hold our Nintendo logo image, and then it's going to hold our green background that you saw uh, in the animation. So what I do here is self.nintendo is my logo. I convert it. My background is a surface the size of the screen. Convert it make it green, and then I stick self.nintendo and self.background into an images list. I set it initially, the, the self.image attribute of the uh, Pygame Sprite class, I set it to be the first one, which is our Nintendo logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, using my fade, I'm going to fade into my logo, then I'm going to fade out, and then while my fade is black, I'm going to switch that, that uh, the image to self.background so that it's the green background. Then, like you always do, you get the rect attribute of the image. Uh, and then I, I'm passing in the screen object again. And because I want to use screen down here, uh, I, I make it its own attribute. Otherwise, I would just use it in the constructor. But because you're using it in update, that's really important. I can't stress that enough. If you're going to use an attribute from your class in update, you, you don't want to pass it in because you're, when, you're, when you put this uh, class, when you put this object that you create into a sprite group, then you have to pass that screen and it just creates, it creates problems because only this one takes screen into the update function, the update method, and the other ones don't. So that's just a, that's just a little tip. And then I have just a counter variable. Um, this is self.i is going to help define which image in this list we want. Zero being the first one and one being uh, the background, the green background. So in my update, I have the center, which is, like I said in the last video, it would be better instead of doing 320 by 240, just do uh, this, get the screen's width divided by half, get the screen's height divided by half, or divided by two, not half. Uh, and then by putting, our, putting this uh, assignment in update, we can change what i is, self.i, and that's going to change which image is blitted to the screen. So self.image equals the first thing in our images list. It's going to be our Nintendo uh, logo. But if we change i, it's going to update and change to our background. And we'll see how that works in a little bit. Again, crossfade is the exact same. I'm not even going to go over that. Samus, um, I won't say anything about this, but I will include the uh, the code so you can take a look at it. Um, again, this these videos aren't meant to just teach you Pygame, um, but to, to kind of show you some cool tricks that would uh, help your games be uh, a little cooler, hopefully. They help my games. So let's take a look at our main loop. In order to use the crossfade correctly to uh, fade between the logo and then to the background and the Samus animation of her um, breathing and running, I've made two loops. So this first loop is going to uh, fade our logo and then fade out and then we're going to change our background and run the other animation. So what I've done is I've made uh, a bool keep going for our main loop 
and then keep intro is our intro loop. And then I've made this variable so that uh, I can change it. It's basically just a sentinel. I can say if we've done our fade, our first fade, or when we've done our first fade, change this to true. And then we can use that variable, that bool, um, to, to say what to do next. So let's take a look at this first loop. Uh, we set our frame rate to 30. If our transparency value is zero, uh, which means uh, perfectly transparent, we're going to time delay for a second and a half like we did in the last video. After we wake, wait a second and a half, we're going to change the direction by multiplying by negative one. And then we're going to set our, uh, our first crossfade to true. Um, but then when our crossfade is over, uh, our first one, and we're back at black, 255, and our first fade is true, then we wanna exit this loop, change our background to green, put Samus on top of it, and then run this other one. And that's what we do. Uh, just to explain real quick the rest of this loop, you've got your update and screen um, methods of the sprite class, the sprite group class. Um, actually, we're not using groups here. Um, here's another quick tip. If you just use pygame.sprite.group to put your sprites in a group, then you will uh, these these sprites will blit onto the screen in random orders. Um, I used to think that it was like ordered updates, which ordered updates says whatever order you put these in to this uh, to these parentheses, that's how they'll go on the screen. That's how I used to think group was, but I kept trying it and it wasn't doing that. So I looked up in the documentation and this is, I think, really the way I'm always going to uh, use sprite groups now so that they're always in the order that I want them to be. So again, in or for to use um, this kind of sprite group, you're gonna do sprite.ordered updates and then however, whatever order you put your sprites in the parentheses, um, it, it's coming towards you. So fade is going to be on top of black sur of back surface, our background surface. And fade is going to be on top of Samus, which is going to be on top of our fade surface. I mean, our background surface. So yeah, so we go through, fade in our logo, fade out. When we're black, 255, we're going to get out of our loop we're going to change our background surface. Remember, I is our counter for our images. We're gonna change it to the next one in line, which is uh, one, which is our green surface. Then we're going to change the fade direction once we've changed the background to our, our green box, and then run our animation. And because we've ordered our updates um, in this way, it's going to uh, make sure that Samus is on top of the green surface. You could get if you just did a group that Samus is underneath or that the fade doesn't go on top. And that's pretty much how it works. It's really nice. This other code is just when I press space, I'm changing the state of the animation um, using the same multiply by negative one uh, that I used in the fade direction. So let's look at it one more time. It's a nice clean fade. We've got it running. That's it. I hope you liked it. I hope it helps. I'll put the source up and you guys can get it. See you later.